Hi, so we're going to have a look at different materials that we use for cladding in um, growing environments under protection. So this includes cladding materials. So what, we, what do we mean by cladding materials first of all? So for our protected structures such as greenhouses, cloches, cold frames, etc. Um, we have our framework which is usually wood, aluminium or steel. So anything that covers that framework is called cladding and in the syllabus we have some uh, names of cladding materials which you need to be familiar with and you need to be able to evaluate them according to certain um, physical characteristics as well. So just to remind ourselves, we're on um, theory module R2114, the protected environment, and we're looking at section 3.2, which is your cladding materials. So before we start, remember, we're not just talking about greenhouses here. We're talking about all the different types of environments. So conservatories, cloches, cold frames, polytunnels, and greenhouses. Okay, so before we evaluate each of our materials, we've got a few samples here, um, we're going to have a little look at what we need to consider when we're looking at our cladding material. So light transmission obviously is key for photosynthesis and we want a material where the light will pass through rather than being deflected because maybe it's scratched or uh, um, there's impurities in the glass for example or if it's dirty we want the light to pass through. Um, surface abrasion, does it scratch easily? Strength, weight, safety, uh, relative costs compared to other cladding materials. Now those are listed in the syllabus but I've also added durability and sustainability because I think they're two other important features and if you answered it correctly, they couldn't mark it wrong. Okay, so we're gonna start off with glass. Okay, so we all know what glass looks like, but glass for a greenhouse or a cold frame um, or a cloche is special horticultural glass, which is three millimeters thick. So this is it's quite heavy actually, you know, compared to a piece of glass you have in a photo frame. This does feel quite heavy. This is the ideal width for light transmission, um, but will also provide some insulation as well. We've got to think about um, light, pen light transmission in relation to insulation. So sometimes if... Um, a cladding material is very thin, it will let more light through, but it will also let a lot of the heat escape. So it's always getting a balance between getting the most light in, but retaining as much heat as possible. Because once the rays pass through the cladding material, they bounce around inside the greenhouse and you know they don't go back out. Some of, some of the wavelengths don't go back out through that cladding and that's why the temperature rises when you get the sun on a protected structure. So here we have our cladding material, three millimeter horticultural glass. It is very resistant to surface abrasion, doesn't scratch easily. Um, algae and things will grow on, you know, where it's touching the framework, you can get areas of sort of um, mould and algae forming, but not on the, it does form eventually, but not as quickly as on other surfaces. Um, it's very durable, it's heavy, you know, a, a glass greenhouse is not going to blow away in the wind, but I have seen polycarbonate greenhouses that have blown away in the wind if they're not anchored properly. Um, so it's heavy, safety wise, you could use toughened glass on um, doorways, for example, where you're more likely to trip and go head first into it. So you've got to think about where it's going to be used. Um, what else do we need to think about? Um, sustainability, this will obviously, you know, if it's dropped, it will break. Um, but if, if it's in a good framework and nobody falls into it and you don't get any footballs hitting it, it will last forever. So um, it is very durable. I mean, the key thing with this is that it lets the most light through. So commercially, 
um, when you're doing intensive growing, they are all covered in horticultural glass. So that's your glass. Now let's move on to the different kinds of plastics. So we've got polycarbonate, which is this pile here. We've got acrylic, which is also known um, as perspex. That's the trade name for acrylic is perspex. And we've got polythene, or the proper name is polyethylene. So obviously this one is used for small structures like these little plastic grow tunnels which have you know just some wire sticks that you put in and then you put the polythene over and then obviously we've got our big walk-in polytunnels where the polyethylene el, sorry polyethylene is a lot thicker than this this is quite lightweight um, I've also included a bit of um, popping plastic here because often we might use this to insulate the greenhouse in the winter so it does sort of become a cladding material um, for insulation more but it will affect the light. So these are all plastic so therefore from a sustainability point of view they won't um, degrade so you know that you can't very difficult to recycle so therefore not particularly sustainable um, from that point of view. They are pretty durable but a lot of them will discolour and deteriorate over time. Polycarbonate for example can go quite yellow over time with the UV um, light. So let's have a look at polycarbonate first. Now you can get it as a single sheet like this. I sent off for some samples and they've labelled this as polycarbonate so I'll believe that it is. But this is the form that you normally see it in when it's covering things like um, a greenhouse structure. Um, often it is twin walled meaning that there's a, an air gap between. So you've got two walls of polycarbonate with an air gap between. You can also get triple walled polycarbonate as well. You can get, as you can see here, different thicknesses of polycarbonate as well. And they can also be coated with different finishes. So this one is more of a privacy screening. This one is more of a shade screening to reduce the light levels entering. So usually in most questions that I've seen um, in the answer they've called it twin walled polycarbonate rather than just polycarbonate. So the advantages of this is it's cheaper than glass, um, it's easy to install, you can cut it to fit the space that you want to cover, um, it's lightweight, uh, from a health and safety point of view, it's safer. You, you know, if you fall into this, it's not going to shatter. Um, it lets the light in, but it's not as good as glass. Um, and it's a better insulator than glass because you've got the air trapped in between the two walls. Um, this does scratch though, however, compared to grass, glass. So, um, in fact, I've got a piece here. I don't know if you bring the camera up. I don't know if you can see the scratches on that, but it does scratch quite easily. So over time, that will affect the light transmission. So that's our polycarbonate, and that's the type that you see most often on greenhouses. Also, you see it, you see it as a lid on a, on a cold frame as well, and you get cloches made from it. So our next one, um, which is in the syllabus, is acrylic. I've only got a little uh, sample of this, also known as perspex. So it looks very similar to a, um, a single sheet of polycarbonate. Um, this is the one that's supposed to be the best light transmitter after glass. So glass first for the light, and then acrylic is the next one, and then polycarbonate. So that is its main attraction. It has a lot of the disadvantages of your polycarbonate. It scratches easily, it can deteriorate with UV light, um, but it is lightweight, you can cut it to size, uh, but it is a type of plastic. So um, often see this on, as a lid as well on uh, cold frames, a see-through lid. So that's acrylic, polycarbonate, acrylic, and then our last type of plastic is our polyethylene, uh, which is usually stretched over um, a 
a steel frame if it's a walk-in polytunnel very useful for growing in rows where you can um, do some early protection of your vegetables for example so this is used to increase the temperature often to trap heat but obviously we want some light to go through because of the shape and it's curved light has the opportunity to penetrate at different angles so it's quite a good light transmitter but i would say if we look at these in order it's it's not as good as transmitting light compared to these other ones above but again it depends on the thickness of the polythene and how clean it is now this one does uh, go green very easily polytunnels often go green on the top and as I was telling my students the other day, the best way to clean it, it's like when you're doing your back with a towel, you throw a great big um, duvet cover over and have somebody either side doing that. That's, that's the way you can clean the top of a, a poly, polytunnel or polythene, um, polyethylene tunnel. As I mentioned earlier, just a bit of um, popping paper, which is another type of polyethylene. Obviously due to its nature, um, with all the, the bits of plastic at different angles, this would be terrible at um, transmitting light, but is applied usually um, to insulate the greenhouse or polytunnel. So those are our plastics. Um, then two other cladding materials mentioned in the syllabus are fleece. So fleece, again, a little bit like um, popping paper, is, is more for insulating and protecting from the frost but obviously you still want light to be able to get through so your outdoor crops can continue growing. So you often see this as a, as a, um, a tunnel cloche. Um, so light penetration is poor, and, uh, but heat insulation is pretty good. Um, it's not very durable, doesn't last for long, it will rip easily. So you're only, you're only using this usually for two seasons, maybe three, depending on how you look after it. Um, so that's fleece and then our final one is shade netting so there's all different grades of netting um, you've got to be careful that you get the right size of squares because this one um, you know I'm not sure on the exact size of squares that makes them safe for birds but they can get their little legs trapped Sometimes if you use one that they can't get the leg out of, but they can get them in and it's really sad when you find a bird trapped. I think this one would be okay. But this is what you would tend to use as a proper shade netting. You know, it's quite a dense weave on it. And this is one that's been bought, that's got this um, kind of uh, eye framework all the way around it. So you can attach string and then hang it either on the outside or the inside of your protected structure and obviously the main aim of this is to decrease light penetration it is a type of plastic again so um, it will deteriorate over time um, as, yes some degree of insulation as well but the main use of this is to reduce light transmission so I think that's a general comparison of all the different attributes of these cladding materials there's always a bit of debate about say toughened glass for example is it slightly thicker who knows um, obviously it's a lot safer uh, but we, we have done a bit of research on the internet and so you know these are the best things we can find out but you know if you have any other comments you can always post it in the comment section on the Facebook page and that's it